Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the History of Fashion and Costume Design series. My name is Bridget and today we are going over queer shoes in medieval Europe. And my title is Making a Point of Sexual Expression Queer Shoes in Medieval Europe. So the pointed shoe that we commonly see in medieval media um, it's called a poulain or a krakow. And poulain evolved from the French term from Poland, also called krakows, as they were believed to originate in the city, which is now Krakow in Poland. Their name refers specifically to the point of the shoe. Up on the top right, I have a poulain and krakow from the Museum of London. And you can see that it has quite a point to it. Um, these originated in the 12th century, gaining widespread popularity in the 14th and 15th centuries. And directly below um, the image of the Krakow, we have this medieval manuscript from the 15th century showing three gentlemen in these Poulet and Krakows, potentially four. We just don't see the fourth guy's feet. Um, but they were very popular during this time. And this ostentatious style of pointed footwear became popularized in late medieval Europe as a medium through which the wearer could display both high status and ascription to various values of a masculine identity and sexuality. Typically worn by the aristocracy, as wearing shoes with extremely long tips was simply impractical if you had to work in fields, haul goods to market, or fight as a soldier to earn your income. Thus, the wearers could afford leisure time. So the material these are made out of, um, they're usually crafted of fine materials, including dyed velvet, silk, and leather. And the ones over here, the images sourced from JSTOR, I believe these are all leather except for the bottom ones. The bottom ones are the um, dyed velvet, but the top three are all leather. Uh, the point elongated toe, otherwise known as the peak of the shoe, would be left limp, but occasionally stuffed with moss, hair, wool, or other materials, and occasionally decorated with this ornamentation, including small bells at the tip. And points of these shoes could reach as long as 15 inches. Rebecca Shawcross, the author of Shoes and Illustrated History, serves as the Shoe Resources Officer in Northampton Museum and Art Gallery in England. And this is claimed to have the world's largest collection of shoes at reaching 12,000 pairs, but alas, just one intact pair of Poulains. Another surviving example of Poulains Shawcross mentions includes includes an uncomfortable looking hunk of whalebone that was used as a stiffener, um, which was used by high class people. And now when we're reaching into like the masculinity, so wearing poulains or krakows was believed to have the symbolism of masculine performance as the longer the toe, the more masculine the wearer is. Um, and there's this phallic symbolism of erection. Historians Michelle Lagron and Andrea Vianello describe the pairing of poulains with tight pants coming into fashion at the same time allowed males to effectively display three phalluses instead of just one. And the tip, the length of the poulain would represent a hardened phallus. So as we went over earlier with the material, the poulain would be stuffed with hair, moss, wool, and like the harder it was, and even whalebone, as we just discussed, um, the harder it is, the more it was supposed to represent like this erect penis. Um, and it was stated that someone who wore foulains with bells sewn to the ends of them, it's indicated that the wearer was sexually available. So figure two down at the bottom right, um, I have it circled in red. It shows like this image, um, this reconstructed image of this bell that's on the tip of the poulain. And if you stood at like a corner, say, of like a street or a marketplace and you were waiting um, for a romantic interest to pop on by, you would like shake your foot, tap your foot and the bell would move and make this auditory stimulation that it would signal and signify to the others walking by, hey, I'm available. Hey, I'm looking for a lover, um, which I think is really funny. And it was stated 
Um, yeah, I just said that I was stated if someone wore that, they were sexually available. And while there is no archaeological evidence of chains or straps holding up the Poulain's lengthy toe, many drawings or manuscripts depict it. So figure one right above figure two, it shows this chain that was supposed to be attached to like the leg um, to hold up that tip rather than like flopping or tripping over it on the ground. Um, and I do believe um, with my own... Um, understanding that this is commonly depicted in plays during medieval times or movies um, that are during a medieval era. Um, however, we don't have any actual archaeological evidence of that happening, but it is very commonly depicted. So I don't know if it's like a fantasized um, image of what we believe. Um, and then right on the top left, we have a medieval illustrated manuscript depicting same-sex love from 1220 to 30. And this was uh, from a Bible in Vienna. And uh, these two men are just wearing the Poulains and having a good time. And I love it. <laughs> and next, if you saw in that image, there were like these little demon dogs crawling around them, which is very interesting. Um, so that image you know, as it was in the Bible, might have been viewed as like, don't do this with like the demon dogs crawling around them. And that is because the church began to attack pointed shoes as indicators of deviant sexualities. And church authorities saw the Poulain as encouraging sodomy. Additionally, the length of the point would prevent kneeling, uh, thus praying at church. And priests then called them, started calling them Satan's claws. Uh, Pope Urban V banned them in 1362, but it didn't really stop people from wearing them. And here I just include a few images from JSTOR of men wearing the Poulains and Krakows. And something I also found really interesting um, deep diving in this research is sabatons, um, which are the metal coverings of the feet for armor started depicting like this Poulain Krakow pointed toe as well, which I think is very interesting. Um, so the shoes pointed design was also created in metal for armor. And my question, um, if anybody knows who's watching this video, I would love to discuss um, or if you have a comment about it. Do you think that this serves as like a representation or symbol of masculinity or is it just referencing the popular fashion of the time like it, there's so many questions I have um because um at the bottle of or at the battle of Nicopolis in 1396 when the Ottomans routed an army of European crusaders the French contingent was forced to cut off the tips of their poulains in order to be a speedy retreat um, that was quite a word full for me. <laughs> uh, but like they would have to cut them off in order to run and battle. So I'm like, why would they have the pointed tips in the first place? It's just, it's very, it's a mystery to me. It's very interesting though. Um, and on the right, we have the armored shoes of Maximilian the first from 1485 and then 14th, 15th century sabatons um, as well underneath it. And then I also included this image um, I found on JSTOR. That's the Sabaton's shape evolution. And as you see letter B here um, from 1300 to 1490, the elongated toe um, starts protruding out. And then in C, it's like more the duck bill shape that's more common with the Sabaton. So just a lot of questions. I'm just, I'm just so curious. And I feel like fashion is really similar to art and art history where the movements are a response to the one before it, if that makes sense. So like B with the elongated toe, then C it's like it's shortened and more squished. I don't know. There's there's a lot of questions there and I would really love to uh, further look into armor. But anyways, going back to the Poulains, <laughs> um, I was really curious and I started deep diving on like health conditions and how this affects human anatomy. So the shoes left skeletal remains with bunions due to squishing of the toes. And on the top right, we have an excavated medieval foot bone show a bunion with the lateral deviation of the big toe. 
And paleopathologist Jenna Dittmar was surprised to find evidence of bunions. Intrigued by the unexpected prevalence of bunions, Dittmar and her colleagues analyzed a total of 177 skeletons from the 11th to the 15th centuries buried in and around Cambridge in the United Kingdom. The research team found that 27% of the skeletons dating from the 14th and 15th centuries suffered from bunions compared with only 6% that dated back from the 11th and 13th centuries. The 1300s saw an arrival of new styles of dress and footwear and a wider range of fabrics and colors, the researchers said, and the remains of shoes excavated in London and Cambridge by the late 14th century suggest that almost every type of shoe for adults and children was at least slightly pointed. And this causes these health conditions, these health problems. Um, and I source this just from CNN, it was a quick research on just medieval shoes and how that affects uh, foot anatomy. And down at the bottom right, I believe my little footnote got cut off, but this is a shoe from the Museum of London, and this is depicted to be or thought out to be um, a shoe of a wealthy man due to the carvings in the leather. And the next slide is my work cited. Um, I highly recommend reading any of these if you're interested in shoes or uh, material culture. Um, the here at, <laughs> at the very bottom, William A. Rossi's The Sex Life of the Foot and Shoe was very interesting to read. Um, There's a lot to dig out there that wasn't just on Poulains and Krakows, but more shoes. Um, throughout history that really represent like sexual expression, which I think is super wonderful. Um, I think it's really great to remind ourselves that queer people have existed throughout history and there is actual evidence of that. Um, and we've been here for a while, so <laughs> um, forever, in fact. So thank you so much for joining me um, for another goofy, fun little fashion lecture. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I am more welcome. Um, I am more than happy to accept any questions, comments, concerns. Um, if anybody knows anything about the sabatons and why they were appointed, if it represents masculine identity, sexual expression on the battlefield, or if it's intimidation of masculinity, or if it's representing fashion at the time, I would really love to deep dive into that. But Again, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going off on tangents, but have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.